Marilise and Benjamin van der Berg, thank you both very much for joining us this morning. You guys are married and you, you work together, which in the first place is difficult, isn't it? Uh, morning, Gareth. Yes, morning. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys ever get to some revolting crime scene and look at each other and go, oh, this is the best part of our day? <laughs> uh, true that. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know about... Damon, but Sia and I are fascinated with what you do for a living. First, I'm also fascinated. How did you start in this line of business? This is not something, you know, when you ask kids at school, like, what would you like to do <clears throat> when you grow up? They say, I want to be a pilot, a firefighter. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a doctor. No one goes, I would like to clean up the brains and the blood and the guts on the floor <laughs> on some crime scene. No, true that. <laughs> no, absolutely. How did well, it start? Well, we read the books and we were quite intrigued by the entire story. And obviously we saw a need for it um, because, like you said, not a lot of people get up in the mornings and think, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah. So, yeah, we were intrigued with the idea. And also it helps people. So you help them in a level that not a lot of people can help them. So, yeah, we definitely felt the need to do it. Well, I mean, it's a... There's a gap in the market, right? I mean, there's huge, huge, huge supply and not enough demand in terms of, of the job that you do. So you guys must be really busy. How many of these do you do in a week? I, it varies. Now with lockdown, we are a bit busier than normal. Really? Um, yeah, no. Um, I think the entire the economy at the moment, the financial strain on people, the cigarette and alcohol ban, I think that wasn't good for the economy, or obviously for the people. So, yes, yeah, there's definitely an increase in suicides at the moment. So oh. we are busy than normal. Sure. Now, okay, I, I don't want to be crass. These are obviously people's lives, and I don't want to sound like um, someone who's just trying to be shocking for the sake of it. But we need to – I think all of us have this fascination with what the most popular ways for people to kill themselves are. Um and you, you guys can smile about this because you really have to be sensible. You can't go in and be emotional about this. Otherwise, you won't be able to last a day in your job. So when you go in, it's very factual. You have to do the job. You have to clean it up. So how do most people in South Africa that you've experienced cleanups for take out their own lives? <clears throat> well, it depends on um, men tend to shoot themselves more than um, than women, for instance. And women tend to, you know, um, the risk cut their wrists, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. So both of them are messy as hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> so do men want to shoot themselves in the head? Yes. Ugh, that's that's got to be a horrible thing to clean up. Yeah, but, they normally uh, choose the Persian carpets and the um, awkward oh, with no. the trophies. And <laughs> no, hang on. Are you allowed? Are you allowed on the scene? By the way, you're allowed. Are you, are you allowed on the scene to do your cleanup while the body's still there? <coughs> Surely the police must be there first <clears throat> to examine forensic evidence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, or does it happen often that you actually are dealing with the body? No, luckily. So what happens is when we get a call, we ask for the SAPS case number, and then once we have right. the case number, the body has been removed, and the police at the scene back to the family. Then only we go in and do the cleanup. But but we have okay. been on scenes where the body has been present. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask a question? So I had an incident at my house where somebody shot themselves in the head and there was blood, but it was outdoors. It was on like a paving. Should I? What is the difference between me having taken just a hose pipe and washing it away, or bringing a cup oh. like you guys? Like, is just is it is it a case of you don't want blood, old blood lying around for hygienic reasons, oh. or like? Because in hindsight, I thought to myself. Should I have done it? Shouldn't I have done it? I, 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 I still question that. The correct thing is to do not to do it yourself. Um, not just for the traumatic experience of the entire thing, is but also bloodborne pathogens. So there could be viruses and bacteria in this in blood because I mean you yes. don't know what someone has when they die. So it's be, it's just better to get us to clean it up. So you know it's forensically clean and there's no viruses and bacteria left behind. Because oh, do, you guys, do you guys just pitch, pitch up with a hose pipe and a vacuum cleaner? And, and, <laughs> or, or, or do you have like hazmat suits and special yeah. equipment? Yes, no, we do. A special, um, specialized chemicals made especially for what we're dealing with. And I mean, we cover from head to toe to also safeguard us. So yeah, it's quite important mm. you know, what we do and how we do it. <laughs> well, well I, I want to be a real nerd. What are the chemicals that you use? 
Well, we basically have chemicals for each and every entire. So if you have blood on glass, special chemical for that. If you have on wood or um, cements or carpets, oh, okay. so one has a special, specialized yeah. chemical. Okay. All right. So you wear a hazmat suit. You go and you use high pressure cleaners. I mean, what do we do? What do we use to actually spray the stuff off and like tidy it up? Lots of it is hands on, unfortunately. Yes. Are you scrubbing oh. brushes and stuff? <laughs> yeah, basically, oh, it's the Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's hardcore. Oh my god! All right, okay. So let's talk a little bit about, about some of the things. So obviously, there are accidental deaths too. You must have seen some very bizarre things. True. And I, I, I know that for you, these are probably great stories for when your friends come around for a drink or a braai. You know, in the old days where we used to do that. But what, yeah, what, are the, sure. what are the more bizarre accidents where people haven't tried to kill themselves? They've, they've actually just fallen off a ladder or, you know, where they were, they were busy changing a light bulb and electrocuted themselves to death or something like that. Tell me about some of the bizarre things you've seen. Well, we haven't had, well, maybe I'm lucky in that sense, had so many bizarre um, ones happen to us. But we had uh, some of our franchises had, um, where yes. they arrived and on scene, and there were quite a little bit of sexual. Um, oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Auto erotic asphyxiation. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so it's had, that has happened. Yeah, we, we, we did have one where um, large steel pipes fell on the guy and. Yeah, basically crashed his entire leg. Well. Yeah. So, yeah, that was oh. quite bad. But he didn't die. <laughs> yeah, luckily not. Do you ever come across a scene where you've arrived? And the pets, the dogs that live on the property, are like full of blood because they've been filling, they've been walking amongst them, and they pause the blood, and they got blood on their face, and it. I mean that that's horrible, hey? Oh my god! I'm sure you that happens often. There, no, there have been scenes where um a body would have been um undiscovered for quite a time, and then the animals inside would have started eating. Eating the actual. Eating <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and that ha that happens a lot with like old ladies and their cats, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, the cats sit there all fat. I know, I know this sounds this sounds really insensitive, but I, I'm sure you guys have a different attitude to this than most people. We we'd all I would feel extremely uncomfortable cleaning up this stuff or being in a room where there's a dead body or even if there had been a body that's now removed and I have to go ahead and tidy it up. But for you, how do you keep yourselves sane in all of this? You seem to both have a good sense of humor about it. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> the sense of humor is important. And um, just briefing one another, we'll, we'll have a talk about it. Mm. And um, it's, like, it's like a switch you flip. You go and you do the job, you get out and you try and just to forget about it. So you just file it away. So that's also a good coping mechanism. <laughs> what is what is a, a case where you have to put, clean up what do they call gross filth? What is that? That would be um, warning scenes <clears throat> and, and um, sewage and yeah, sewage. Sewage. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you have okay. a hotel chain and they have um, the blocks the drains get blocked. So you can't have yes. a towel with certain things in. So then that's also a cleanup that we do. I remember there was a story from Cape Town not so long ago where someone, someone's toilet overflowed. And it actually, because they were on the top floor, it flowed down into the other floors. And the whole apartment block had to be like super cleaned by people who probably do what you do. Now, that's with with sewage, like, I mean, what, what kind of extra precautions do you have to take with like, human shit? <laughs> well, the suits get doubled up. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely make sure there's not a, not a sexual skin showing. So, yeah, we double up mm. on the protection on either side. Mm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this and, might and seem... It must smell horrible. I mean, what do you do when you get home? You have a long shower? Yes, for hours. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can I ask something? Like, just... <laughs> From when you first started doing this until where you are now, what have you learned or changed in terms of dealing with the family, in other words, the customer? So when you first arrived, you were probably very nervous. Like, how do I deal with these bereaved people? Now do you have a special technique where you make sure you don't see them, you ignore them? Like, do you have like a kind of like a policy about that? Unfortunately, you can't ignore them because, I mean, we had an incident <laughs> two weeks ago where a 24-year-old committed suicide and his parents were obviously devastated. 
Mm. So what happened was um, the father kept to himself. He was in the house, but the mother, she couldn't leave us alone. She was in and out the, because he lived in a cottage and she was in and out the whole time. I don't know if she was... So that, that's difficult because now you have to try to do your job. You have to console her. She's, um, so we, we prefer if the clients can just, you know, go outside of family members could actually come and pick them up. But unfortunately, yeah. that, that's not no, always, that's not always case. possible. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes it difficult, yeah. Really tough. Uh, and, and motor vehicle accidents you do as well, right? <clears throat> no, no. Um, we've had um, vehicles where um, people have had, where people have committed suicide in, and then we oh. clean up the vehicle. Mm. But we don't do um, vehicle accidents, no. No. Okay. And then what do they do? They refurbish the car, but they need you to clean it first. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm sure that no one wants to keep a car that someone's tried to kill themselves in. <laughs> Well, unless it's a classic. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that happens. Yeah, of that course. happens. <laughs> well, you say that, but it's also scary to think about what has happened in hotel rooms. And you oh. and I will innocently come and book at a hotel. Meanwhile, there could be like a murder spree that has happened there. Yeah, you, no, you guys have yeah. seen a lot of that. Yeah, no, that, I, I don't like sleeping out anymore in hotels. Oh. <laughs> So, Marilise and Benjamin, you guys must be slightly different to other people in other ways. I mean, you you probably really like horror movies. None of that stuff freaks you out. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I think we've said all. <laughs> yeah, it it sounds like you're almost you know okay with this stuff, and and in some ways, that's probably the normal way to be because human beings have been used to violence throughout history. Human beings have had their <laughs> arms cut off in battle. They've fallen from great heights. They've been crushed by stones. <laughs> you know, bad things have happened to people throughout history. The, this time we're living in now is almost unique in that we don't see as much of that. And, and you guys do. So you're like the, the normal ones, if you want me to put it that way. <laughs> so that's the reality of life. Yes. I mean, you can't have everything sugar-coated. You can't live in a bubble. This is the reality. This happens every day all over the world. So this is the reality. I'm sure, though, that there are things that even upset you. I'm sure when there are children involved, it must be very traumatic and very difficult. That can't be easy. No, children, animals, uh, not, not no, at all. The, the people who are left behind, you know, I mean, yeah. it's always very bad. Tell me about hoarding. This is where people um, mm -hmm. will have a room just full of stuff and nobody's been in that room for like 25 years and you guys go in and you have to like get rid of the rats and the and the and the, the stuff is kind of molded together and it must be really weird what you see in places like that old people who've just kept stuff for thousands of years <laughs> yeah i know they do they do i mean there once was a, um, a lady passed away and it actually took us three three days to get to her body because of all the grass filth and all the hoarding oh. was lying around so it took us three days just straight off to actually get to her so the police or the police could actually remove her body and we can carry on with our job three days what did she have like boxes stacked around her and stuff everything she, she even um oh. Collected uh, cat litter and the cats dropping stuff like that. And so. dead and dead cats as well. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Oh my God! There were dead cats under the boxes and things too. Yes. Wow. That's Must cool. have... <laughs> and did this woman, did this particular woman, did she live totally by herself, or did she have family yeah. like in the? Okay. Wow. That's what does that smell cat. like? <laughs> Luckily, with our respirators, it helps a lot. So it, it tends to keep up the smells quite a bit. So it does help. We had we had something in the roof of one of our rooms at Cliff Central, <laughs> one of the recording booths, and it it was like a rat or something had died in the roof or the floor, or we could never find this thing. But it took it took us I don't know eight months for that smell to go away. Now, I can only imagine if you've been in a room where it took you three days to clear the rubbish around someone before you could even get to the body. That smell must cling to your clothing, to your, must be in your nose for like a couple of hours at least. It must be awful. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, <clears throat> the smells are extreme, you know, you got, you know, guys. And um, yeah, but the worst smells for me are the um, decompositions, though. 
um, yeah, mm. they probably were. But that's mm. but that three day job with that hoarding woman who passed away. Who who paid your fee? Who paid your bill? It was family members that lived in the UK. Wow, Jeez. hey, they, they really loved her. Huh? And did that and that did that family in UK know how she lived? Did you? I don't suppose you would have known that. No, no, we cannot give to all you know all the details, but we suppose they didn't know. Yeah, so it sounded like surprise. Just yeah. tell me quickly, a de decomposition. So will the police come in first and they will have a look and they will write down, oh, well, it looks like this person died three months ago. What's the longest period? Have you ever actually seen just the skeleton and everything else is gone? No, no, no. The longest period we had was approximately two months, maybe a bit more. Jeez, two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what does wow. the body look like after two months? Um, so your <laughs> yeah your fat starts to what's the word yeah uh, basically you explode if they pick you up <laughs> they yes, try and yes. move you and everything is all the like, gases yes, there's like a layer of oil all all over the floor and it's an absolute and, liquid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow hey <laughs> oil the question oil. is what what gave you guys the idea to do this and what did you do before well I was in logistics and transport prior to this. And um, yeah, and, and I am um, at an animal feed distribution um, business. But yeah, we were at we were at the stage where we um, wanted to do some, something, and um, this came across our path, and one thing led to another, and yeah, we, we did it. And here we are. <laughs> wow, this is fascinating. My God, what a job! <laughs> <sighs> I'm still stuck on the layer of do oil. Ever, I'll never ever, be able ever... to see that. Do you ever get into an argument like, no, you do that part? You know, that kind of thing? <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. Absolutely. We, yeah, we do. <laughs> what, are there things that one particularly doesn't like to do? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yes. Not, and, at least what do you really not like to do? It becomes a storage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes uh, what? Yeah. The storage. I, I, I battle with that one. <laughs> okay. And Benjamin, what about you? Uh, the um more detailed work, I guess the the finer details. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you you guys have uh, son, you have a son who's twelve years old. Yes. When he goes to school on like the day where you say, "What well, what do your parents do?" What what does he tell the kids? Well, then we have to make up new jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm you said, do, you, do you just say to him, "You've got a cleaning business"? I mean, you could get away yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, that absolutely doesn't know the truth. So yeah, that we keep him sugar coated yes. in the bubble. We don't. Yeah. Sure. I mean, when do you feel like you he'll be old enough for him to know that you do this disgusting work? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when he's eighteen, we'll see. I, I <laughs> see. See, I yeah. <laughs> see, I mentioned that on the occasion you found evidence that the police overlooked. Yes. On a scene. Um, we How often does that happen? Sometimes, sometimes we found a um, gas bottle that the one person used to kill another person, and he just replaced the gas bottle in the garage. And everybody overlooked it. And while we were packing up, we saw um, this gas bottle with blood oh, and wow. Yes, yes. And then you told the police. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they handed in for evidence, and yeah. But other other teams have found fungus. I suppose they found knives and the actual gun. <laughs> yes. No, but you're, what you guys found was a lot more um, Agatha Christie kind of thing. <laughs> that was much more interesting. Wow. Now, what's amazing is like you've done, you did this one case where there was a suicide murder at a popular hotel. This couple was found dead in the room. Both of them had been shot and they obviously assume one shot the other and then killed themselves. But what made the scene weird was that there was a random pregnancy test found and a half eaten McDonald's burger strewn across the room must have been very odd did they ever get to the bottom of that yeah that was that was our first scene or uh, we did it with the team and it, yeah, it was quite um yeah exhilarating or you know yeah it was a different different type of scene um but yeah um as far as i know i don't know if they actually ever figured out who shot probably they did but we're not like i said we don't always know um what happens afterwards or or so but on that these. pregnancy test just throws things off so maybe she yeah, was... yeah, but I think they probably had a fight regarding it or wow and the mcdonald's and, as well and you know you you often hear about like stories where someone 
um, will will kill somebody, but then they don't know how to get rid of the body. Have they ever tried to call you before the police have come? Yes, that happens. Wow. So that's why we ask SAPS case number before we attend any scene, because we don't yeah. have a SAPS case number, we can't touch the place. So there has been people that oh. actually murder. But you got to get a murder. But how yeah. do you, and how do you verify the case number? We find a police station up and just to make sure it is a valid police number. Right. That's wow. pretty amazing. Now, just tell me about this Russian woman in Pretoria last year. Um, yes, uh, th that was um, the lady that um, I decomposed for about two months. Um, right. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Just wow. alone, and yeah, and what a hectic one that. <laughs> but the no, fact I... that she kept her dead son's body for about two years, can you explain that? Yes, yes, apparently um, we were told that she had a, a, a son and the son was a paraplegic and um, so he was bedridden all of the time and apparently he died somehow and then mm -hmm. she just started, um, she decided to keep him. She fed him and she changed his diapers <coughs> and everything while he, was, while he was dead, yes. For two years. Yes, for quite a while, yeah. Human, wow. Human nature, man, it's a... Yeah. Oh. Now, I remember... We interviewed the Blood Sisters. Do you guys know them? Rulina yes. uh, and Eileen. Yeah, they basically, they formed our head office. So, oh. yeah, they in the Western Cape, yes. Okay, so they found you guys. Yes. yes. <laughs> wow. So, they, so once you purchase a franchise, they do the training, and, I mean, okay. they support you. And, yeah, so they're basically the head office, and then we're all the franchisees now that actually does. Oh. No, I mean, you guys must have incredible company functions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, have you ever found any really hazardous substances? Because you guys will come in to do cleanups there as well. And, and you'll come in your hazmat suits. But like we saw this explosion in Beirut, right, with this ammonium nitrate last week, which was, was a terrible situation. Have you ever like got into someone's house and they've got like tons of rat poison or or, or really dangerous stuff, uh, maybe explosives? Um, not us personally, no, but I do know one of the other franchises have, um, or actually I've a few times um, came across, um, you know, uh, a lot of drugs and oh, right. chemicals and, and stuff, and meth labs as well. Yeah, yes. meth labs. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, again, I, not wishing to be insensitive, but you guys are the best people to ask this. If I wanted to commit suicide, and I wanted to do it in the cleanest way possible to leave as easy a job for you as possible. Because it's in the bottle of the show. It's horrible yeah. for you to, to to leave a mess for everyone else, right? What is the best, first of all, what is the most clean way for me to do it so that there's not blood and stuff? Um and 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 which which are the scenes that are the easiest to clean? You go, oh thank goodness, that was just a you know, like an overdose of pills or whatever. Just put the shower on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, but it's definitely the bathrooms because I mean it's all tiled. Yeah, okay. Definitely the bathrooms. <laughs> Not all right, to put but the but, no. but which, which, which way to go? I mean, like obviously you don't want to shoot yourself. There's just stuff all over the room. Then um, hanging is probably not that great either. It, it uh, depends when you'll be found, I suppose. So. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's say I, I uh, let's say I leave a a message on the voicemail of someone or whatever. So I, I make sure it's as, you know, I, I, I don't want to make trouble. I want to be as <clears throat> sensible as possible. Uh, a handful of pills, I mean, what, what's easy? Yes, yes, yes. basically, yeah, that's definitely the uh, way to go. Right, and the worst way, the most selfish, messy, terrible ways, shooting. Shotgun. 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 Oh, a shotgun. Oh, my God. All right. On While you're standing on a Persian carpet, right? <laughs> Basically, yes. One, of those, one of those fluffy carpets. That's the worst. Mm. <laughs> How else do you make a mess? You never know who you might need to spite one day. Just oh is the God. glass. Can I get that involved? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So how about this? If I get, if I have a bloody nose, this is some useful tips for people who have to clean around the house occasionally. If I have a bloody nose and I and, and some of that blood gets on my favorite shirt, what is the best way to clean blood off? Without damaging the, the, the shirt. No, Ronaldo, um, all the, if, see, if, unfortunately, if it's a colored shirt, you can't really use any 
um, bleach substances. Oh. So that becomes difficult, yeah. unfortunately. But, but lemon juice? If it was a white shirt, bleach is okay? Bleach is okay then, yes. All right. Damon, you said lemon juice. I was just, I, I'm just asking, is lemon juice an option? Uh, unfortunately. Wine stains. On a colored shirt? Uh, do you guys have any any advice on wine stains? <laughs> <laughs> and why not try bleach too? <laughs> oh my god! Wow, I could talk to you. I could talk to you all That's day. Amazing. This is amazing stuff. Jesus. I'm not. I'm not saying anything about your characters, but I hope you never have a tick or inclination to become serial killers, because we would never know. <laughs> You guys could wipe out half of the Earth's population and we'd never pick it up. Yeah. Be I, often, I, often have I often have conversations with friends of mine about like if, and obviously it's if because I'm not a criminal, but if, if I had to get rid of a body, what would be the best way to do it? And you guys would probably be the best people to ask advice on that. Um, so, so if I did want to like destroy a, a, a human body, you know that there's movies like Snatch where the guy says, "Well, you feed the body yeah. to pigs." Um, have you have you come across any really smart ways of getting rid of evidence like that? Move to Aranya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> now, um, I, I suppose if you really want to get rid of a body, I suppose if you, you know, um. Yeah, feed it to the pigs, I suppose, or acid yeah, or something acid like, it, like in the movies. I, I okay, uh, not mm. and, and, it, and is it better to have heat or cold? Because cold, obviously, then you're refrigerated, it lasts longer. So you rather want it in the heat, right? Yeah, just then there'll be a smell. So mm. yeah, yeah. Think oh. about that part. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, just do what the ma mafia did and like encase them in concrete and drop them in the sea. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. That's a good right. Well, there we go. Sure. What an enlightening half hour this has been. So, so, so. Yes. Sure. Okay, I got, I got one or two questions here from people. Um, uh, what kinds of? Uh, someone's asking what kinds of chemicals would you use on blood? Uh, you just said bleach, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, uh, I think you would pee and poo before you commit suicide. Is that also true? Do people? Do people uh, sh shit themselves before they they do that, or after, or during? I think sometimes. Okay, all three. Yes, also <gasps> because your your muscles relax, you know, if you're done. Oh, so wow. sometimes we do. So some... If you can, so if you consider it, you'll go to the toilet first. <laughs> yes. But, yes. E but even then, but even then, that's no guarantee. Morally nope. said, please. <laughs> oh, please, you insensitive people. If you're about to take if you're about to take your own life. Well the thing is suicide suicidal people are normally quite selfish, so it's unlikely. True. Wow. And it's unlikely, yes. And it's definitely unlikely. That's the true mm. reality of it. Absolutely. Just, just last point from my side. Like your social life with this I, I don't know if you go to church or like your friends they all know what you do and they all understand it and they're fine with it yes yes um although it's not something that we discuss with them as often as people would think i think but, uh, most people don't really want to hear about this you know mm -hmm. but as a married couple you come home from work you you might have had a really uh, some seen some really horrific like amazing things will you talk about it or not Yes, we, yes do. We, we, we do. We do. We do. We do. Hmm. That, I mean, you're you're allowed to once the case is all closed and everything. No, what I mean is, are you talking to each other because wow, because so fascinating, or more because it's therapeutic, or a bit of both? Both, absolutely both. And what stood out for you, or what did you find difficult, or in new ways of improving our service as well? You know, next time this works yes, better, let's yes, try this. Yes, yes. So it's for us. And also now, and working together as a couple. Do you ever have arguments, fights, and then how does it affect the relationship? I suppose, like working with any husband and wife, <laughs> we'll tend to. No, but this is different. This is really, really close. You, you're really close. You're not just with your wife in the office, in the house, and you're in the cottage. You guys are really, really together all the time. Yeah. I think when you're in the thick of things, you know, when you're actually on scene and stuff, and then um, I would be like, you know, just quickly hand me that, and she'll be like, you know what. I'm busy, busy or whatever the case may be. So you get irritated with each other sometimes. It's amazing. Well, listen, guys, uh, best of luck with the, the, the incredibly interesting work that you do. It's uh, what's you. Your, your business is called what? Crime Scene Cleanup? 
Yes. 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 Blood Sisters Crimson oh. Cleanup. Yes. All right. Very good. And and I, I hope nobody has immediate use of you now, but you sound like you're busy anyway, so you may have to book in advance. Uh, that is Murray okay. <laughs> and Benjamin Funnenberg. Pleasure to meet you both. Wow. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah.